Why the Book of Revelation Predicts that the World Will Be Ended by the Catholic Church by Bob Pickle. <clears throat> I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world, a life in plastic. Fantastic, my life is actually a sad and terrible story. Hollywood is it the most glamorous place ever. Blame the media, the fake news media, to be exact. Don't move to Hollywood, you'll meet some weird people, people, and everything's expensive. Liberalism opened the door. As LBJ once said, don't eat of the swine or you'll spend an eternity in limbo. I moved to Hollywood expecting the glam and fame to happen. And I made sure to move to the east side because the west side, you know, about, uh, well, people live there. Uh, <clears throat> sadly, did not happen. Now, I'm an intern, you see. Uh, actually, I'm more of a waiter at Olive Garden and a cashier. When you're here, you're family. This Olive Garden owns a VHS tape shop. So sometimes the tapes get inside the salads and lasagna and people shit out scary stories. You know how it is. I was waiting tables and giving out VHS tapes when I saw a mysterious man sitting alone at one of the tables. I walked up to him and realized it was the most evil man in the world. No, it wasn't Brain the Mouse. The man. The myth. The legend. It was... Bridley Copper? He was very stern and disheveled at the same time, giving me the evil eye. In fact, he was so stern, it was probably actually Howard Stern, but he lives in New York. I'd like some fucking breadsticks and a Coke Zero, he asserted, in less than five minuets in 76 seconds. That's six minutes and uh, whatever, you, you foreigners, you figure it out. I return with everlasting breadsticks and his drink. Would you like soup or salad, I asked. He quickly ate the breadsticks. Salad, he said, giving me the cold stare like a, like a cigarette. Dude, why was he giving me an attitude? I was just trying to make ends meet. I mean, sure, I could move back to my native Kansas and live a nice, quiet life as a small-town farmer. My parents would appreciate it. But, you know, tornado... Tornado, tomato, tomato, tomato. I came back with a bowl of salad, tomato. I began to toss the salad as I saw a VHS tape that was blended in with the lettuce and tomatoes. Oh, no, not again. Brittley asked what it was, and I informed him that he couldn't have the VHS tape because that would be extra. He got very angry and demanded to receive the tape for free. I told him no. He punched me in the face, and I fell backwards onto a table. The tape was still in my hand. Give me that tape, you twat! I quickly got up and round-kicked him in the head, knocking him in the tossed salad everywhere. Spinning star to kick! I ran fast out my job like Cosmo Kramer to my crappy apartment. And I didn't work at that uh, comedy club where, uh, well, you know, something happened. I took a deep breath and looked at the tape from my hands. The lost episode of Gossip Girl, it's said in Comic Sans font. I quickly put the tape in my brand new VHS player that I got for only $10 at Goodwill. I paid them in play money and the bastards couldn't tell the difference. I began watching the tape with a pack of Olive Garden breadsticks and a liter of Diet Coke. My diet, since I'm too poor to afford things in liberal fornia. Mr. Newsome. Yeah. I don't mean Gavin. It seemed fine. Nothing hyper-realistic was on the screen. It was in perfect 1080 HP, which was strange because this was a VHS tape and not a Final Fantasy, so fuck logic. But instead of the Valley Girl voice, it was Peter Griffin! <coughs> Hello, Appa Eastsiders. Gossip Girl here with some juicy stories for today. <coughs> What are ostriches? Why do these animals exist? While Peter was narrating, there was footage shown of ostriches. Look at these goofy animals. They do absolutely nothing in this world, Meg. They put their heads in the sand, and they look very dumb. At least with birds like chickens, ducks, and turkey, they're porpoises for us to eat, 
And what do ostriches benefit? Nothing. That grinds my gears. You know what really grinds my gears? George the ostrich. He absolutely does nothing with his life. He has no job, no income, and he mooches off of people. Just like what people in this capitalism society. They do nothing to the world. Wait a minute. That looked a frig of a lot more like Squidward than Peter Griffin. George the Ostrich. Get a job like everyone else and stop being a freeloader. I do a lot in this world and I work my ass off. Show me the facts and logic. Send me the truth. And who am I? That's one secret I will never tell you. You know you love me. XOXO. Gossip girl. Well, that was totally useless. I've seen this show many times, but how did the ostriches make sense with gossip and juicy stories? Anyway, the episode started off as normal. It was set in New York City. We see Serena van der Woodson, played by Blake Lively, walking down the street looking very glamorous and beautiful, I guess. Uh, totally not jealous of her, of course. She entered a building, and she sees her best friend, Blair Waldorf. They were talking, giggling, hugging each other, typical girl stuff. They probably had a thing for each other. Blair asked Serena if they wanted to go to the mall, and she said yes. As they were talking, I know you're not going to believe me, buddy. Skeleton came up to them. Well, actually, it was Jenny Humphrey. She was very skeletally thin, and she had goth makeup on. She looked like that type of person that would hiss at you and... I was starting to get uncomfortable about that. I'm kind of, I'm afraid of cats, and snakes, spiders. Well, this show just got weird. I mean, with its cuts, transitions, every time a scene would end or move on, the Seinfeld would play, and it didn't even match the show at all. All of a sudden, it cut to a scene with Serena and her boyfriend, Dan Humphrey, on top of the World Trade Center. Uh, this show was made in 2007. I'm starting to think there was something evil about this tape. It was a beautiful shot. They were slow dancing, kissing, hugging, bleeping. It was a romantic scene, but I was starting to get jealous. But then I started to get creeped out when I saw Jenny slow dancing, this time with an actual skeleton. Such a romantic moment until I saw something that made me have shivers down my spine. Well, shiver me timbers. The camera zoomed in to Dan and Serena. Dan whispered into Serena's ear and said, Buck Thrickland, forgive me for using propane for this. He grabbed a propane tank and knocked Serena off of the World Trade Center. You don't see her fall off, but you heard her scream and a booming noise was heard. Another Seinfeld transition happened, and this time it was just Serena and Blair as skeletons. They were wearing clothes walking along Manhattan Avenue. Uh, but this was happening for almost 15 minutes. I smacked my VHS player so it could work, but that just made it cut the block. I stared at my reflection for five minutes. And it cut to a globe logo with a countdown of five seconds. A breaking news theme song was playing, and an unknown voice was heard. What's up, Dwama Wood Nation? I'm your host, Killer Keemstar. Let's get right into the news. Uh, what the fuck is this guy? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. I was watching my show! Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Hey! I screamed at my TV. Put my show back on! You couldn't hear what I was saying. I'm, I'm an idiot. Today's a special episode today, and I got a juicy story for you guys, said Keem Star, stirred as he was sitting in a room with his laptop and microphone. Today, Brilly Coppa was physically assaulted in Olive Garden. Today, he'll join us for an interview, and later we have a long discussion with George the Ostrich about ostriches. But let's get into the story about Brilly Coppa. He was physically assaulted by a waiter at Olive Garden. Brilly's on the phone with us right now. Brilly, can you tell us what happened? 
Bridley coughed for a few minuets. Yes, thank you, Keemstar. You see, I went to Olive Garden because I am Italian and I was hungry. I'm actually an Italian too, but that's beside the point. I asked for my meal and the server round kicked me in the head for no reason. I didn't do anything to deserve this. I'm struggling in Hollywood. I'll need to be assaulted. Every gosh darn day. I feel disheveled. And I can't handle this harassment anymore. I'm planning legal action against that ginger son of a bitch. My eyes widened in shock and I froze in terror. I had to quickly apply a Shaquille O'Neal icy hot patch in order to function. Okay, that's it. I'm going to call the cops, I said. Once that went through, I grabbed my wireless phone and called the police. 911, what's your emergency, said the operator. Bridley Copper is trying to kill me and harass me. I have proof. Please help. Help, 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 I said. There was silence until I heard that voice. It was Bridley, but he sounded like a white guy who was trying to act black. I'm not racist. You call the cops on me, I'll find your bitch ass. You'll never be famous like me. You never get an Oscar nomination at me, motherfucker. I will get my revenge. I'm better than you and anyone else. I'm not evil. I just want my revenge. I'll come to your house and punch you in my face and your face too. And you'll suffer, you change the fuck. Just you wait. The phone call ended as I heard a hard knock on the door. I opened my door and I was hit in the face with a prosthetic leg. I fell to the ground with a nosebleed. It was brittly. Tied my arms and legs up and dragged me to the living room. I was screaming like Homer Simpson. Bart! And I began sobbing really loud. I heard a noise and I looked up. And I couldn't believe what I saw. Oh my gosh, by gosh, by golly, oh my gosh, by gosh, by golly, it was an orange-haired man. <clears throat> I'm going to guess Donald Trump. No, it, it had to have been George Jetson. He broke into the roof of my apartment and instantly teabagged Bridley with his huge testicles. Bridley fell to the ground disgruntled and knocked out. George Trump untied me and gave me a big hug. It's okay, buddy. I'm here. Don't you worry, he said, calming me down. Donald George was the hero and not the villain. I was I was shocked by this. He picked me up in my arms and carried me to the Ferrari convertible that had George the Ostrich and um, my black neighbor. I, I like to call him Urkel. We drove off to the sunset just like in Thelma and Luis, but we didn't drive off a cliff. I'm confused with what's going on and hoping that Bradley won't find me anymore. He probably works for the FBI. He's probably listening to me right now using the chip in my phone. I just hope that man gets the help he needs. And I hope one day that that even I can live that that Hollywood life. Everybody comes to Hollywood. They want to make it in the neighborhood. They like the smell of shit in Hollywood. How could it hurt you when it looks so good? I lost my memory in Hollywood. I've had a million visions, bad and good. There's something in the air in Hollywood. I tried to leave it, but I never could. Shine your light now. This time it's got to be good. You get it right now. Yeah, because you're in Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah, let's all live that Hollywood life. Old school Hollywood baseball. Old school Hollywood baseball. <laughs> 
me dance a cuts in line. Old school Hollywood washed up Hollywood standing in the sun. I'm wasting my time. Old school Hollywood washed up Hollywood. Old school Hollywood baseball. Jack Gillardi's ten feet tall. Old school Hollywood baseball. Me and Frankie Avalon. Old school Hollywood washed up Hollywood. Old school Hollywood washed up Hollywood. Hey man, don't you touch my belt. Old school Hollywood washed up Hollywood. Standing in the sun, I'm about to melt. Old school Hollywood washed up Hollywood. Old school Hollywood baseball. Jack Gillardi's ten feet tall. Old school Hollywood baseball. Me and Frankie Avalon. Old school Hollywood washed up Hollywood. Old school Hollywood washed up Hollywood. Old school Hollywood baseball. Jack Gillardi's ten feet tall. Old school Hollywood baseball. Me and Frankie Avalon. Old school Hollywood washed up Hollywood. Old school Hollywood washed up Hollywood. Old school Hollywood washed up Hollywood. Old school Hollywood washed up Hollywood.